Hello and welcome. Today we are going to study about the scaling problems of MOSFET and alternate structures such as multigate transistors. The success of VLSI industry is due to reduction in the MOSFET size. And as we are going to reduce the size of the MOS transistor, integration density is going to increase, power dissipation is going to reduce, cost is going to reduce, all the advantages are there. But apart from this one, there are some challenges are also there. So what are those challenges? And to overcome those challenges, what alternate structures we can have, we can go through this one. This is the outline of our today's talk. The challenges of CMOS scaling. As we are going to reduce the length of the MOS transistor, MOS transistor, then we are required to reduce the supply voltage also. And as we are going to reduce the supply voltage, we are required to reduce the threshold voltage also. But if you are going to see as the L is scaled down, V is also scaled down, but the scaling is not proportional to the length scaling. The VDD scaling is not proportional to the length scaling. So we are required to maintain a ratio VT by VDD is of 0.03 is desired. The one advantage of scaling the power supply is as we are going to increase the speed of operation that is frequency of operation is increased then by scaling this power supply voltage active power will be reduced but this is having the drawback also so gate delay is going to increase it is going to take more time for the gate delay the, because of this there will be decrease in the Oper speed of operation is also there. Then one more problem will be there that is the threshold voltage. You cannot go on scaling the threshold voltage because the most important part of any VLSS circuit is standby, standby power requirement and this standby power of power is given by the number of off transistor, total off transistor VDD I of and exponential of Q VT M by KT uh, by M KT. As we are going to scale this VT, this off standby power is going to increase. And another important major problem is sub threshold swing. So we are required to maintain sub threshold swing near ATM. The next one as we are going to scale the transistor, we are required to scale the gate oxide also. For gate oxide scaling, there are some guidelines will be there. As per the 1999 roadmap, if you are going to scale technology node, if you are going from 50 up to 50 nanometer up to this one, then upper limit and lower limit has been specified. So this mainly this gate oxide thickness scaling limitation is because of the technology available and the scaling is also limited by loss of inversion charges through the gate leakage and degradation in the carrier mobility. So the gate oxide as we are going to scale because of the gate voltage there will be a tunneling current will be there. If you go from scaling 3.5, 3.2 like this up to 1 nanometer the tunneling current is going to increase and sub threshold swing is also degrade. It is going to degrade as you are going for the scaling that is when you are going from scaling 20 nanometer oxide thickness you are going to scale so it is going to have drawback on the sub threshold swing also. Then apart from this one there will be as the device size is scaled down 2D effects are going to take place. So to overcome these two dimensional effects what we can do we can have increased body doping and we can have super halo in the source and drain regions. But increased body doping is going to create a problem. We are required to have 10 to the power of 18 per cubic centimeter doping. This is very difficult to control. Then another problem is the quantum effect on threshold voltage. So as the surface voltage is going to increase about 10 to the power of 5 volt per centimeter. So this is going to have a problem on VT. This VT is going to increase and in the small area with high doping density 10 to the power of 18 per centimeter square cube 
centimeter cube difficulty in creating a channel profile that controls the short channel fx is very difficult then apart from this one as we are going to scale the gate oxide so this is going to have increased field will be there so actually it is going to have a problem on the mobility of the charge carriers mobility degradation will be there so if you are going to see the whole dig whole mob mobility and electron mobility it is going to follow e to the power of e effective to the power of minus 0.3 but as we are going to increase uh, this is going to increase the field because of this what is going to happen it is going to follow e to the power of minus 1 to minus 2 and this is going to clearly tell that the mobility is going to degrade as the field is going to increase the basically uh, dopant fluctuations will be there that is the physical limitation as the size is going to become less than 35 nanometer and controlling of channel voltage is also a major problem will be there so in summary what are the problems of cmos scaling that is mosfet scaling will be power supply and threshold voltage scale problems gate oxide scaling problem short channel effect problems high field effect so in high field effect we are having the quantum effect will be there mobility degradation will be there and dopant fluctuation will be there which is going to create the problem to overcome this what we can have we can have alternate device structures the first alternate device structure is we can have double gate mosfet so one will be the bottom gate and another one will be the top gate will be there and there are two types of operations will be there so here in this one both gates will be controlled by a same voltage both will be switched on simultaneously in this one bottom gate will be connected to a fixed potential and another one operation will be controlled by this top gate but if we are going for this multi gate that is double gate transistor if you compare this uh, scaling whenever we are going to scale this mos transistor it is having a better effect of double that is drain induced barrier lowering so in double gate double uh, gate mosfet we are going to have a bell controlled double effect will be there but in double uh, single bulk single gate bulk transistor this devil is having a serious drawback then it is going to increase the mobility mobility enhancement will be there and it is going to allow you to use higher gate oxide thickness then another advantage of this one is sub threshold swing will be there sub threshold swing in single gate bulk will be like this but in this one double gate we can control this one it is uh, near ideal but in double gate uh, single gate bulk mosfet this uh, sub threshold swing is having a severe effect on this one the various fabrication uh, we can have depending upon the orientation of current we are going to have type 1 type 2 and type 3 double gate mosfets will be there but in this one the fabrication issues are there accurate alignment of both gates is a difficult issue alignment of source and drain region to both top and bottom gates it becomes a difficult task then self alignment of two gates to one another is another major problem and providing an area efficient low resistance connection from the top gate and bottom gate it will be a difficult to overcome this one we can go for a fin fed structure in fin fed structure the, we are having a channel and gate is placed all around the channel so in three dimensional we can see this one so source will be there drain will be there and this is the channel and we are going to have the gate all around so in this multi gate transistor it is called as fin fed we are going to have two types of fabrication first we can see on soi so on soi silicon and then oxide will be there silicon on insulator a silicon will be grown on this we are going to have silicon dioxide will be grown and silicon oxynitrate silicon nitrate will be deposited on that one and then we are going to have the oxidation will be carried out and we are going to have phosphorus doped si will be deposited on this one then afterwards source drain will be etched in this one source and drain will be etched while si fin will be protected by this hard mask si o2 then afterwards 
we are going to have SiO2 separators will be formed here. SiO2 form uh, SiO2 separate spacers will be formed, and then we are going to deposit B plus doped boron doped Si germanium gate will be fabricated. The advantage of this SOI finfet is easy fabrication. This excellent scalability is there. Near ideal threshold swing we are going to have. Low source drain capacitance will be there. But the disadvantage is poor thermal conductivity. Then high wafer cost and three terminal device will be there. To overcome this problem we can go for the bulk finfet. So in bulk finfet instead of using SOI we are going to build the finfet on the bulk SI wafer. Then fabrication steps are compatible with conventional CMOS and nearly same scalability as SOI finfet will be there. As it is going to use the bulk better heat dissipation will be there and floating body effect of SOI finfet will be eliminated and as it is going to use the bulk because of that it is having low wafer cost will be there. The schematic of bulk finfet consists of like this. So it is having an SI substrate. On this one we are going to have a fin structure. Here it is going to form a source and drain and we are going to have a gate all around. The fabrication steps for this one will be first on the silicon wafer. A trench will be etched. This trench height will be decided by the fin height. And then we are going to cover this one with the oxide silicon oxide layer on this one we are going to deposit silicon nitrate will be deposited then afterwards using chemical vapor deposition SiO2 will be deposited over this one and then chemical using chemical mechanical polishing it will be polished until this SiN layer will be SiN silicon nitrate layer will be visible then afterwards this SIN layer will be dipped in SIN layer remaining trenches terminal oxide is grown 